I'm Foggy, and here is a My Foggy Stuff mashup. This week, we have some fabulous craft reviews all about dollhouses with nature themes. From our island dollhouse to our treehouse, we got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here is our Moana-inspired room. Yay, Moana! I absolutely love Moana. I love everything about that movie. It was so beautiful, so gorgeous. I think I saw it twice in the theaters. I don't know. And then as soon as it came out on DVD, I had to have it. And we had to build a room, and I have two Moanas. Yeah, a little bit of a Disney fan here, and definitely a Moana fan. That is why when we decided to make her a room, I wanted to make a room that really represented what the movie was about or represented what she was about, which was the Hawaiian culture. And it is so awesome and beautiful and just like, there's so much texture. I love it. In designing this room, I watched the part of the movie at the very beginning where the grandma was telling the stories and all the kids were sitting there like, Ooh, ah. And there were panels of fabric that came down all the way around so it was nice and dark, like the perfect setting for a story. However, this doesn't really look dark and you can't see the panels of fabric here. This should help. Yeah, that is so much better. And the background really helps to make you feel like you're there. I love backgrounds. In the movie, these had beautiful, intricate paintings on them. And originally, I planned on replicating those kinds of paintings onto the panels. I just didn't get around to it. I know, that's like the worst excuse. And uh, yeah, sometimes I get a little lazy in my crafting. I do, I admit it. I'm not proud of it, but it happens. Although, I feel like this room has a lot of detail, even though it is very simple. All we did to make this room was we started with a base and we used a sandpaper print for the base. I found this exact scrapbook paper at Joanne's Fabric, so if you have one of those, that's the only place I have ever been able to find this kind of sand print. And it's my favorite sand print because it has so much texture. Then we added a base on top, and we, it's like a platform. No, okay, so there's the base, and then here's the platform, <laughs> sorry. And the platform is pretty low to the ground, although I felt like we had to make it some kind of platform. When you're making your project, you can choose to raise it up a little higher. However, for filming purposes and staying inside the scope of my camera, I tend to, I'm sometimes I am limited to the size of our creations, because then it won't fit in my screen without having to stand all the way in the back of the room. Then we went paper tube crazy. Uh, the kids' homework has kind of just been piling up. We haven't been doing a ton of paper crafts lately. I mean, kind of, but they haven't been like, you know, with rolls of paper, which is my favorite way to recycle school paper. Kids bring home so much paper from school, it's insane. And so this is how I, you know, cope with the fact that there is so much paper always in the house. I turned it into stuff. And this, I don't know how many sheets of paper this was. This was quite a few because these are very, very thick. And we used one, two, three, four, five paper tubes around the front. And then at the very top, there are paper tubes that go along from each pillar as well. So yeah, it's a lot of paper. But I'm really, really happy that that's paper that is not in the trash. Yay, planet! So, if you have mastered the art of the paper tube, then this project is no problem for you. Um, I put on a movie and just sat there and rolled paper tubes for like hours. And the way I always roll my paper tubes is I use a wooden dowel for the center because wooden dowels are 12 inches and it's always really helpful when the center that you, the piece that you use for rolling, ha, ah, can't talk. And it's really helpful when what you're rolling around is longer than your paper. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. The wooden dowel is 12 inches and the paper is 11 and a half, so it gives you a little extra on the ends that you can use to help get the paper nice and tight. 
And one day we can sit down and go through how we roll a really tight, strong paper tube because these are so much fun. Think of all the things you can make with paper tubes. We can make island bedrooms, we can make Grecian temples, I mean, columns, pillars. It's so much fun. Oh, we can make Moana's boat. That would take a lot of paper, but that would be awesome. So awesome! So after we rolled our large homework paper tubes, we then covered the outside with a wood grain scrapbook paper, and I added a textured scrapbook paper to look like there's carvings going down the wood beams. In the movie, all the wood beams are beautifully and intricately carved. However, I only had like one or two pieces of the scrapbook paper, so I had to ration it, and so instead of covering the whole beam or larger parts with the scrapbook paper, I did it in smaller sections so that I could kind of spread out the pattern. Then, to add more texture, we wrapped it with twine or hemp or whatever you want to call this. I find it at Home Depot. I pay like $2 for a large spool of this kind of twine. I call it twine. I don't know, everyone calls it something different, but I call it twine. And it's like $2 at the hardware store, and it's one of my favorite things to work with because it's inexpensive, yet it has a great texture, and you can hot glue it or use regular glue, and it sticks really good because it's got, like, you know, natural fibers. Then, then, <laughs> sorry, and then we wrapped the top of the beams to really help to reinforce it, and it just looks so cool. Even though we covered a lot of it up with the little, with the roof, this, that we cut up, what is this, paper bags? Yeah, we cut up paper bags to make the roof. Another fun way to recycle! But I think it all came together nicely to give us this beautiful, really rich texture island effect. Since this is supposed to be a tropical island, we had to add some plants. Ideally, I would have loved to have built like a forest going all the way around, but since we didn't have that kind of space, we just added a little bit of greenery to the corners. At this corner, we started out with a low type of bush kind of plant, then we had a wider leaf, and then a large palm at the top. And I only had two of these large palms. I really wanted more. This is what I wanted to be hanging down the side so it looked like there was a large palm tree, but I only had two leaves. So I had to, once again, ration my supplies. So we have one here, and then there's another one on the other side. Then we added some green plants just kind of hanging down so that we have different levels or layers of the greenery. We have some in front and then we have some in the back, which helps you to think that there's more there than is actually there. It's all an illusion. Let's talk about this hammock. This was a big hit in this video. The hammock is very simple to make. It is very time consuming, but it is very simple to make. I actually learned how to do this weaving technique in the fourth grade using just cardboard and yarn. I know, super simple uh, supplies. Most people will have that around their house and you're able to make pretty much your own textiles, which is so cool. And look at the texture. You know I'm crazy about texture. You can't get better texture than this. It's so textured. What is the word of the day? Texture. And I know somebody is going to watch this video and count how many times I say the word texture <laughs> because, yeah, texture is very important to this project. You need a lot of good texture. And for our beautifully textured hammock, I used a 100% cotton yarn. And the color was called Natural. I found it at Michael's Craft Store. And it has these little tiny specks of color in it. Let's see if we can get the camera close up. Can you see all of those little specks of color? And that was important to me because I really did want all of this to look very natural. We love the hammock so much that we made a separate video on it going in detail how to make the entire thing. So you might want to go and check that one out too. And this is actually the second hammock that we have made. We've made one before a long time ago using 
like a it was a striped fabric and that was really cool it was very similar to the Barbie hammock that just came out that one did require some sewing so if you're looking for a no sew option then this one is it plus you can make this very large you can I've seen people say they want to make these for their cats just make sure the ends are very secure have a seat in the hammock it's super comfy uh oh we're just gonna use our hammock for Moana's bed for our last little textured detail we made these crocheted baskets using the same twine that we used around the top of the pillars this gives the room some storage and they really look great we didn't go into detail on how to crochet these baskets in the video um, people have been asking for us to make a video on how to crochet and I can make one it's just that I probably don't crochet the traditional way I don't know I was never like formally taught um, I learned when I was 10 one afternoon when I was sick my grandmother taught me and I only really learned one stitch that I kind of use for everything. Well, not stitch, but crochet. And I am actually happy to show y'all. So we will definitely do a in detail video on how we make the baskets. If you would like one. So let us know in the comments below and we can make that for you. Overall, I think this project was a lot of fun. Since we only made half of the room, it can easily be stored on a dresser or a shelf. And I think there is potential to maybe add on, making the perfect home for Moana. I absolutely love this doll. I love the hair. I love how different she is. She is definitely one of my faves. We hope she enjoys her island room. So awesome! So check out the video to see how we made this room and the video for the hammock. There's even a 360 tour of this whole room in our doll beach video. So that was a lot of fun. Also, follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. Hey, you're missing a few. Sorry about that, Moana. But we are also Froggy Stuff on Twitter and the Frog Vlog on Snapchat and my froggy stuff on Facebook. And for this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. All right, Sophie out. And we hope you have as much fun as we did making your own Moana Island room. Our tree house. Wait, I mean, beach house. This is not a tree house. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay, hold on. Our beach house. I have been wanting to make this beach house all summer long. I even went to the beach and got authentic beach sand. And it smells horrible. Yeah, a couple of months in a plastic bag, it pretty much smells like old wet gym socks. Ooh, now that I like. Mmm, no, I think I'll pass. All these big plans. I was going to make like sand dunes that had like real sand on them, and it was gonna be just so awesome. Except it wouldn't work. I mean, come on, nobody wants to hang out on a beach that smells like old gym socks. And the sand was, it was just a mess. It was worse than the glitter fiasco of February 2014. Oh, and the glitter fiasco? <laughs> we'll have to tell you about that one later. <laughs> so I really wanted to make a beach, but I had to come up with something that was a little simpler. So we decided to focus more on a beach house rather than the beach and make the beach more like a backdrop, which is neater, cleaner, and easier to store. I mean, really, where would I have stored a beach? <laughs> So the beach house is basically one of our box rooms with a few adjustments. Every time we make a box room, we try to push ourselves a little bit further and add some other or new kind of architectural design, like the working windows in our dorm rooms to working shutters and doors. And we really wanted to try something different with the outside rather than covering the whole thing with scrapbook paper. We noticed that lots of people have a hard time sometimes finding um, natural looking scrapbook paper. So we thought we could use computer paper because I thought that's something that most people might have available and it's pretty inexpensive. But when the paper was all white, it was kind of hard to see any of the details. 
So we dry brushed it with a dark brown paint to give it a whitewashed look. And I think it turned out fabulous. I love it when things look all, uh, you know, rustic looking. I don't know what it is. It's just when things are all weather worn and miniature, it just looks really, really cool to me. Yeah, well, a fresh coat of paint every now and then wouldn't hurt. Rustic. Where's the closest five star hotel? Regardless of what Sophie says, I like it. We even added this little antique plate on the doorknob, and it really just adds a little touch of charm. All right, let's move inside the house. For this box room, we left a fourth wall that can open up to extend the floor space of the house, giving a lot more room for the dolls to live in. We even added a second window and did the same treatment on the bottom half of the wall. Well, it's a nice enough house, I guess, but um, you do realize that if it rains, there's going to be a problem. I mean, seriously, I shouldn't have to wear a raincoat in the house. I always cut out the ceilings in our box rooms because it lets in more light. And it makes it easier for giant hands to move around. Plus, it's really good for photography. But you can totally add a complete roof if you like. And if you use a larger box, you can make it to fit bigger dolls like an 18 inch. Or use a smaller box for some of our smaller friends. So now all that's left to do is to furnish it. All right, here we go. Seriously? Nah, I'm just joking. Of course we're gonna furnish it. I just haven't, you know, got to it yet. But you can expect a video coming on how to furnish the inside. But you could have surfboard inspired home decor. That would be kind of cool. Maybe hang it on the wall or use it as a coffee table. Seriously? Okay, we'll make some furniture. Calm down, Sophie. And we hope you have as much fun as we did making your own doll beach house. Okay, spending the day at the beach is pretty nice. Fan mail. I've got mail? Cool. Wait. I don't have a mailbox here. Katie and Marie were so kind and wrote us fab some letters. Katie wants to know if we're still making strawberry shortcake customs. Well, yeah, and we even used your favorite Ever After High character. And how did you know that was her favorite character? Because she said it right here in her letter. And Marie wants to know what is our favorite items to collect besides dolls. I really like fun character mugs. Here is my, uh, my Wookiee and my Monsters University. So, ah. And they sent us some totally awesome stuff, like drawings, awesome, new dolls for our dollhouse, rainbow little bracelets, oh, this is so cool, it's a little fruit plate, and a beach ball, this is so perfect, since we're at the beach. <laughs> Katie and Marie, thank you so much. You are fabsome. The Treehouse. I had no idea when we first started making this that it was going to be so tall. I mean, really, how tall is that? But this project is one of my favorites and it has been loved. The children have broken the handle quite a few times. Then there was this whole ice palace fiasco and now there's like glitter all over the top. But to me, it looks kind of enchanting, so I kind of like it. Like pixie dust. Hey, I'm recording. Get out of here. Fairies. No, seriously. There is glitter like everywhere. Hey, those hands aren't mine. <laughs> but from time to time, it does get a little dusty. So we just use our little broom here from the theater and we just uh, brush it off. So pardon me why I brush the steps of my tree house. But to be about a year old, it's holding up very well considering it's made out of cardboard and newspaper. And I just love this little um, sofa we made here. I think it's adorable and it just has a great look in lots of different rooms. And my kids love it. Even Iron Man has been known to use it as his headquarters. And there he is. All right. And he's going up the ladder. This is made out of paper mache, and I think I used a little bit too much water because the edges kind of bowed. So, I was thinking about attaching it to a piece of plywood. Ouch! And that's a splinter. As I was saying, I attached it to a few more layers of cardboard. Yeah, that's better. 
overall, I am very happy with how it turned out. I really, really like this little seating area we have right here. We've even used it in a couple of videos, like our um, doll fairy wings. And the kids have even added their own special details and apparently taken them away. <laughs> But the treehouse is so much fun, and we hope you all enjoy making your own as much as we did. And it's back. Our doll rainforest house. Every year, we like to do a special craft for the American Girl of the Year. Last year, we made macaroons, I mean macarons with grapes. And that's when I learned they were called macarons and not macaroons. And this year, we decided to make something a little larger, like a house. We made a version of Leah's rainforest house using cardboard, stickers, scrapbook paper, bamboo skewers, old cereal boxes, recycled homework, you know, all of our favorite stuff. And I think it turned out adorable. And we had to find a way to make it a little easier to store. So if we take everything out, We can lay it flat, fold over all the cardboard, place all of the small accessories inside of the basket, neatly place everything on top, and then it can be stored away until later, like under the bed or in a closet. Wow. I know, right? And that's why we only put the shower and other 3D accessories on one wall so that it could be folded down and not break things off. However, you still need to be careful not to, you know, break off the shower. Now let's set this back up. Ooh, you know what? The bed, it could also work as a large desk. Let's just place the chair right there. Fold up the blankets and pillows. Then load the desk up with lots of stuff got to give her a lamp. Maybe she has like a generator or something in the back. Oh, how adorable is that? We have a Polaroid camera because she's into photography. There's little Froggy and Gabby, our dollhouse magazines, a couple of mini books, our doll tablet, which is a printable on our blog so that she can do some blogging and watch her favorite YouTube videos. <laughs> and yes, she has a cocoa latte in the middle of the rainforest. Hey, a coca latte is a survival essential. And a snack. Ooh, that reminds me, Bud Vine. We found these Safari Limited fruits and vegetables at Michael's. And they're regularly priced at, mm, I wanna say $9.99, but if you have a coupon, you can get them like 40% off, which is what we did, and that's like an awesome price. And they are the perfect size for 18 inch dolls and the Disney Animator Collection dolls. I tend to lump the Animator Collections and 18 inch like American Girls, Journey Girls, all of them, into the same group. They can all use pretty much like the same stuff. Excuse me, a what about us? Ooh, that's right! The 18 inch, I mean 17 inch Monster High dolls. They can fit this too. And their packaging says 17 inches. However, they really are the same height as an American Girl doll so we can have tons of different dollies joining in on the fun. Now everybody Aww. clear out. I'm turning this back into the bedroom. All right, there we go. And I love that we used an old scarf for the curtains because it's already hemmed on the sides and it just has a great look. It's like gauzy. Oh, we forgot the little seashells. I have a few seashells from our family vacation and I'm gonna glue them right onto some jute or twine with a little touch of hot glue. And remember to always have adult supervision when working with hot objects. Then I'm gonna take the top end and glue it behind. Brush them with a clear coat of nail polish. It really helps to make the colors pop. Then I can just hang it onto the doorway. Yay, I got my seashells. And finally, we have the grill. We used the same scrapbook paper that we used in our doll kitchen. You know, all of a sudden I have all these uses for it. And it gives the illusion that there is a little fire there. However, we love the idea of using a cell phone. Come on, that is cool, right? This project is so much fun. 
And we hope you have as much fun as we did making your own doll rainforest house. Thank you for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye!